Hello, Internet. Nice to see you. Today, I'm going to show you what I call the suspended substitution. Basically, you're going to take any kind of chord and any chord progression and then put on top suspended fourth chords that work well with the chord progression you are playing and create this kind of atmospheric effect. Now, just to be clear, what I just played came from a very simple chord progression. It came from this chord progression, which is C, G, A minor, F. Super simple chord progression, and adding the suspended substitution created the wonderful chords I played at the very beginning. So, if you are curious to see how I did it and you want to do it with your own chord progression, follow me and we're gonna see it. First of all, what is a suspended fourth chord? It's simply a chord made by a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth, meaning a C suspended fourth chord will be the C note, then the note a perfect fourth above, an F, and the note a perfect fifth above, G. And so it will sound this way. If you want to play them on your guitar, you just need to learn those three shapes on the first three strings, and this will be enough for everything we do today. You will have the first shape, the second shape, and the third shape, which could also be played an octave below. All those three shapes contain the exact same note, C, F, and G. You see one of those notes is circled, that's the root of the chord. We are going to use it because it's going to help us figure out what suspended chord we are playing when we move the shape around. Now, on to the substitution. The substitution will work differently on major chord, minor chord, and dominant chord. As you guys know, there are only those three kinds of chords, and you can see the video where I explain that on the top right. We're going to take these chord by chord. We're going to start with the minor chord because I love the sound that minor chord make, okay? So the idea is this. On a minor chord, you're going to play the suspended fourth chord built on the minor seventh of the chord. The minor seventh is the note that is two frets below the root. So for instance, if you had a C minor chord, the notes would be C, E flat, G. The minor seventh of C will be the note two frets below the root. C, go down two frets and you find a B flat. So I have to play the C chord and a B flat suspended fourth on top. Rather than playing the full C chord, I'm just going to play the root. It's easier on the guitar to do it this way. So I'm going to play a C note as my bass note and I'm going to play a B flat suspended four. The B flat suspended four will have notes B flat, E flat and F. Those are respectively the seventh, the minor third, and the fourth of the original minor chord. So for the one of you who are overly fond of chord names, I'm gonna play essentially a C minor 11th chord. But who cares about the names? How do I play that? So on one of the low strings, I'm gonna play the C note, and then on the top three strings, I'm gonna play the B flat sus4 chord. Using the three shape before, I end up with three possible playable shapes to play this chord. One is this, another one is this, and another one is this, but it can also become this, if I play the root on the fourth string. So rather than playing a standard minor chord, I will just play one of those shapes. Again, I'm just playing a B flat suspended fourth on top of the original C minor chord, and I'm just playing the root of the original C minor chord. I will let other instruments play more. If some other instrument played a full C minor chord, the whole thing will work together beautifully. There will be no conflict between the notes. So if I take now a typical jazzy chord progression, if you want, uh, a typical thing between jazz is typical if play, for instance, A minor 7, B minor 7, so two minor 7 chord that move uh, two frets apart, and it will sound this way. Okay, but if, rather than playing the usual shapes, Just beautiful. 
Let's see what we do instead on major chords. On major chord, we use a similar strategy. We still play a suspended fourth chord on top of a major chord, but this time we build a suspended chord on the major third of the major chord. So if I have a C major chord, my notes are C, E, G, the major third is E, and on top of it, I'm playing an E suspended fourth chord. The E suspended fourth chord contains the following note, E, a and B, which are respectively the 3rd, 6th and major 7th of the major chord, so for the overly fond of names people among you, this is a major 7th slash 6 chord. But again, who cares about names? Let's see how it sounds. Using the three shapes for the sus4 chord on the first three strings and playing the C note at the bass, I end up with those playable shape for this substitution. <laughs> or with the root on the fourth string. All beautiful playable shape. If I take a very simple chord progression made by the chord C and F, that normally will sound this way. And I use those chord shape I've just seen, I end up with something beautiful. What to do with dominant chords? We need to distinguish at this point between two subclasses of dominant chords, the ultra-dominant chords and the non-ultra-dominant chord. Now, if you want the jazzy sound, super atmospheric, always assume that the dominant is altered, but I'm providing the other version too, in case the altered sound is too dissonant for the song you are doing. So let's see first the ultra-dominant sound. On an ultra-dominant, you will play the suspended fourth chord built on the minor third of the chord. So for instance, on a C7, that we know it's altered or we assume it's altered, the minor third will be the E flat note, and so I will play the E flat suspended fourth. E flat suspended fourth is made by the notes E flat, A flat, B flat, and those notes will be classified as the sharp nine, sharp five, and seventh of the altered chord. The possible playable shapes for these altered seven chords are those. <laughs> or with the root on the fourth string, that is quite a stretch, by the way, but it's playable, so you can use it if you want to. I think this voicing on the fourth, with the root on the fourth string sounds absolutely beautiful since all the notes are close by. If the dominant chord instead is not altered, you will build the suspended fourth chord on the major sixth of the chord. So, if you have a C7 and you expect this to be not altered, then you will take the major 6th, which is A, and play on top the A suspended 4th, made by the notes A, D, and E, which are respectively the major 6th, the 9th, and the 3rd of the chord. So you get a 6-9 chord. So for this C7, the playable shapes would be those. That's quite of a stretch already, eh? Or you can have this which is an alternate shape for the same thing. Or you can have these. Or finally, you can have these. Or even these. It really depends which one sounds best for you. So again, whenever you have a dominant chord, you need to pick between the altered and non-altered version, and I would recommend you guys do it simply by ear. Just try both versions and see which one you like best. No point in getting bogged down by theory when we're already doing substitutions, which you still judge by ear every time you do, because after all, your ear is more intelligent than any kind of mathematics you can do with music theory. So let's see an example on how to use all these, and let's take a chord progression, and specifically let's take the chord progression we had at the beginning. So, the original chord progression is very simple, it's the super common pop chord progression, C major, G major, A minor, F major. 
Let's identify the chord. Now, C major is clearly a major chord. G major is not really a major chord because it's the fifth chord of the key, and so we should consider it a dominant chord. Yeah, a little trick here. If it's the fifth chord in the key, it's a dominant, not a major. The next chord, A minor, it's a minor chord, and the last chord, F, it's a major chord. Fantastic, so let's see what suspended chord we have to play on top. On major chords, so on C and F, I need to play the suspended fourth chord on the major third of the chord. So on C major, I'm gonna play the E suspended fourth chord, and on F major, the major third is A, and I'm playing the A suspended fourth chord. On G, the dominant chord, I need to decide if it's altered or not. And I say, let's assume it's altered because it simply sounds more spicy. On dominant altered chords, I play the suspended fourth chord built on the minor third of the chord. So on G, the minor third is B flat, and so I'm gonna play a B flat suspended fourth on top. Finally, on A minor, I play the suspended fourth chord built on the seventh of the chord, which is G, so I'm gonna play the G suspended fourth chord. Now you can use any of the shape we've seen before for any of the chord. One possible realization is this. which just sounds wonderful. And if you want to go ahead like I was doing at the beginning, you can repeat the same exact position or move the position around using the different shape every time. Because for instance, for the C major chord with this substitution, I can play this position, but I can also play this other position and they don't sound exactly the same, they sound slightly different, and so with that I can create a bit of variation. So I can keep playing the same chord progression over and over, by changing the position of the chord every time so that it doesn't sound like I'm repeating the same four chord, which is what I did in the beginning. So with this trick you can take any chord progression and make it sound absolutely amazing. This is the great word of substitution. You can take anything and transform it and make it sound amazing in different ways. And that's just one possible trick. There are so many more that allow you to morph your chord progression into something absolutely astounding depending on how you want to sound. If you want to know more about substitution and how to use them on guitar and become an absolute master of these, I recommend you guys check out my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Complete Chord Mastery, it's not a book. It's a complete video course that takes you from the basics up we do everything you need to know about harmony and chords on your guitar. All the theory is done straight on the fretboard. There is no theory for the sake of theory here. Everything is immediately practical and everything is developed through exercises so you know how to apply these immediately on your guitar. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right to check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment, I enjoy reading from you and I make videos on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zillio of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com and until next time, enjoy!